Thank you. That's a good taste of work. Jordan might have answered the question already um, for us by demonstrating, but does anyone have any thoughts on you know, this whole issue of, of can you really create legitimate, meaningful musical experiences using virtual instruments? I think you certainly can, and I guess to the, like, are, are you emulating something? No, I think that the, the real possibility, the real advantage is that you can do something that's never been done before, and that's what's most exciting to me. You know, I, I think that there's a lot of instruments out there on the iPhone or iPad that are trying to imitate, you know, something that exists. And there's, there's really nothing wrong with that because, you know, a lot of people can't afford to buy the real instrument. I mean, there's like the new Chord, the uh, MS-20 thing, which is so awesome. I mean, it's great. Uh, it's, you know, you can't really say anything really negative about it. It sounds really cool. It looks cool. I mean, if, if you know, somebody could say, oh, well, everything is so small. Okay, so it's a, it's an imitation of something. So it's from the from the ground up. It was not designed to be its own thing. So that's why everything is kind of small. So yeah, the, in in this world, um, you know, exists all kinds of things. Imitations where you could say, oh, it's not as good, or it's a little, it's a toy. You know, it's true. There are some things like that. But there's all, also things that are amazingly cool ideas. I don't know, I'm a big fan of Aaron's and the things he develops, and there's a little program that he made called Sound Warp that I encourage all of you to check out, because I really love that one. And it's this bouncing ball where you can take a sample, you can record your own sample, and you just throw the ball, and you watch it knock into the walls, and you can set the parameters for how it responds. And that, to me, is so cool. It's not an imitation of anything. It's a completely new way to think about manipulating sound. So that's, that's what it's all about. I mean, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but I mean, one of the things, I'm so glad you brought up Korg, because I was really disappointed in them, not that I know them or they asked me my opinion, but if you look at the Drum Machine you know, app, you look at, I mean, it's like, fine, that might be a $400 app typically, and this is a $19.99 app, but why the hell are you taking up so much of my screen real estate with tubes? I mean, seriously, you couldn't have done something better with that, like, huge block at the top. I was going to so, give you a Korg endorsement. Uh, <laughs> damn. Oh, well. <laughs> um, but, uh, but, I think, <laughs> yeah, um, but I think something that, you know, I, I think is really important is things like, like the fact that Looptastic auto beat matches two samples that you bring in together. I don't think that's cheating at all. I think that you, it just opens you up to be more expressive in different ways. And, and I think, you know, as an electronic musician, one thing that always annoyed me about watching other producers play live is that they're sitting behind a laptop, and I don't know if they're checking their email or if they just hit play in iTunes. And I think that's something that this, this platform, and it started with like Lemur, right, or like MIDI Glove and stuff like that, but I think that what this does is it brings a performance element back, and that's... That's super important, especially when you're doing something so creative, like you're playing a melody. And, and when you were done, what I loved is the way that you just like gracefully lifted your finger off the screen. It was so emotional and so impactful. And I think you just kind of lose some of that sometimes when you don't have the ability to, to have that audio and visual engagement with your audience. And on the iPhone or iPad, it's totally possible, as you can see, to make an instrument where you feel that kind of you know, expression, emotion, whatever you want to call it. It's yeah. interesting. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is um, the issue of haptic feedback or sensory feedback when you're talking about virtual instruments. Obviously, um, our hardware, you know, even though these devices are amazing, uh, are still limited in terms of what we can do with haptic feedback. So I wanted to talk about, you know, what um, some of the virtual instrument designers have done to, to kind of take that into account. And before we do that, I was hoping Gal would do a demo. Um, all right, I think I'm just going to play you a little, half a little ditty on the Magic Fiddle, um, which is uh, Smule's uh, latest, la latest and possibly one of the more wacky instruments, one of the absurd instruments. Uh, uh, maybe let's go ahead and play first.
tell us a little bit about well sure. about Magic Fiddle and then how you thought about the idea of haptic feedback. Sure. Uh, I think uh, Jordan's intonation is much much better. Uh, yeah. I'm still working on mine. Um, uh, so uh, uh, literally, I think Magic Fiddle came about as kind of like I was actually walking out of. Uh, um, a performance of Long Long in the San Francisco Symphony from Davies Hall, and that's the same performance that Long Long actually th pulled out an iPad and played Magic Piano as one of the encore. And uh, walking out of that, I was like, okay, what if we can make some another instrument based on the iPad, kind of model on a traditional instrument, but trying to take advantage of what the iPad is? And it was like, it was, it was a joke. I was like, what if you could hold the iPad up to your face and you actually had to like maybe even put your chin on it? Um, to activate the instrument. Wouldn't that be like the most absurd thing? And uh, it was so absurd that we had to go ahead and do it. And we committed to it and how came Magic Fiddle. And um, so um, I think to the issue of, of haptics, um, this does feel different. I think there's two things I'll say. One is certainly um, you're missing um, a lot of the traditional feel. Certainly you're missing the feel of the strings. You're missing the curvature of the neck. Um, these are things that actually we actually had the St. Lawrence String Quartet play, play this and this is immediately some of the feedback they gave is that like... What about the pain? <laughs> yeah, yeah, the pain is, yeah. is also there. It's not the same without the pain. Right? Exactly. Um, so it's, it's missing a lot of the pain. It's probably giving you different ca yeah, types of calluses so. and <laughs> um, normal strings. Um, but at the same time, I think in thinking about instrument and expressive musical things for things like the iPad and the iPhone. Uh, if you think back to something like Ocarina, uh, which was one of our first experiments um, in 2008, it's part of it is about haptics, part of it is simply kind of this mindset of physicality, of actually, you know, I think Jordan's Morph Voice also demonstrates this extremely well, is that it's, it's no longer virtual, like the, the meaning virtual or digital doesn't really happen much meaning. It's just the fact you can treat this like a physical object. Um, and that's why I kind of think about mobile devices. If like traditional desktop applications, they invite us to, to be immersed in them. Um, whether it's audio production software, whatever it is, you kind of go into their world. You are in Windows, you're in the screen, you kind of are focused in there. Whereas mobile devices, they, they bring computing out into our everyday lives, into our world. And I think that's the big difference. At the same time, you know, it kind of it's like that the experience happens outside of the device rather than inside. And I think that, even though it's not quite haptic in the sense we think of haptic, is physical. I think that's a first step towards it. Then there's little bonuses you do get uh, from it being physical. Actually, the Magic Piano, um, you actually feel the vibration of the iPad from the speaker actually actuating the the. the the hull or the frame of the device. So that's a little bit of a haptic as you might think about it. But I think it's it's really it really kind of designing with the mindset that it is it is not a virtual thing, it is a very physical experience and you can really I think sometimes mm -hmm. it's it's more engaging because that's that's more more direct. Thanks. Anyone else have any thoughts on that? Well maybe. Um, you know, it's interesting because, you know, we're just touching on a screen and really there's not much going on. Maybe you'll feel the vibration, which is cool. But a lot of times, like the guys in this room especially, will think of ways to make the experience of playing and putting your finger down on the instrument more, like, almost physical. Like, for instance, when you're playing on the Magic Fiddle, like, the strings kind of look like visually are responding. So you really feel, you could look down and feel like, wow, I'm, I'm making that, like, vibrate which is really cool. Where like in MorphWiz, like, we'll give you an option to have rings under your finger that, that um, kind of grow with, the, with your amplitude. So you again feel like, wow, my touch is really meaning something. So that, you know, it's just kind of a, a headspace or a mindset about designing these, I think, where, okay, we know you're just touching a screen, but what, what can we do to make it feel like, or to look like, simulate, you know, the experience of having an intera a physical interaction Okay, so the next thing that I wanted to talk about is, um, you know, basically when we're using these devices, which we will no, no longer call virtual instruments, but let's say, you know, mobile instruments, and, you know, 
they, they kind of enable, I think, a much broader demographic of people to create music than was ever possible. I think I'm probably the only one on this panel that's not a trained musician. So I, you know, I love to sing, but I don't know how to play any instruments. I can barely keep tempo. I can't read sheet music. But, you know, so, and I'm, I'm going to show you La Di Da, which is the app that I developed, um, which makes music when you sing. 